Right, we're here with Ryan Lindsay, author extraordinaire. How are you doing, Ryan? Very good. Happy to be here. How's your day going? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Very busy, but fantastic. Well, it should be. That's it. That's it. Is this your first time coming to Oscom? I think this might be my third time behind the table here. Yeah, yeah. Like in, in succession or? I th yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't think I've missed one since I had started, uh, I guess, two years ago. So three in a row, yeah. Fantastic. So um, talking about the stuff that you worked on, um, when did you get started? I've been writing for years and years and uh, then what you see on the table is probably four years worth of publishing but at least ten years worth of writing and just getting better at it or trying to at least and just sort of chipping away at things and then slowly one short story online begins a, a one shot with an artist and then I've had some success on Kickstarter, um, I've worked with Vertigo and an anthology, uh, I had a mini series at Dark Horse and so it slowly sort of, slowly is the key word that steamrolls into a, a table worth of Good stuff that you're proud to have written, which is nice. And it's 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 all you know, great stuff here. Can you tell us a little bit about some of them? Yeah, absolutely. I've got a negative space, which is a mini series through Dark Horse with artist Owen Gianni in uh, Canada. It's about a man who, a writer who sits down to write a suicide note against writer's block, which is uh, not the greatest way to go out. And um, so he goes for a walk to clear his head, and he basically stumbles upon this uh, multinational corporate conspiracy to mine human emotions, and he realizes he's at the center of it. And so from there we draw out a very emotional tale, but it's sort of very uh, heavily influenced by Philip K. Dick and sort of strange um, science fiction that sort of bends reality a little bit. It's a complete miniseries, it's all collected in trade, and I've got the single issues here as well. It's, um, it's one of the things I'm really proud of. Reviews were really good. When you write about something like depression and suicide, and I certainly don't use it as just a plot device that we move on from, you want to do right by it. And so I very much spent the time reading about it and researching it and considering it and running it past other people. And so when the reviews came in from people who said, you know, I, I suffer from depression and you've written it really honestly and respectfully, that, it means the world to me. So something like that coming through has been a real, real high. I guess to the reader who can relate, it's almost therapeutical. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a big uh, I, uh, advocate of the fact that writing is therapy and you should be getting ideas out there. Uh, one of my first public, published comics was called Fatherhood. It was written after I became a father and the story is about a, a man who tries to get a doll for his daughter and when he can't, he has a mental breakdown and we show that mental breakdown through a crime sort of story lens. So it starts off like Jingle All The Way but instead of becoming a real rubbish movie, it turns into Sin City. But realistically, it's about how far would you go to please your children and could you go too far? And that's the sort of thing where I try to find that balance and it was nice to write it through a narrative. That, and most of my work does have some sort of emotional core theme to it because I think that's when stories matter the most, when you're actually talking about something. I think, yeah, just in order to relate to the reader and yeah. for them to relate back to the literature itself, I think definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the sort of thing I like to read. So you try to create that as well. Whereas I, I do a book as well called Dear Editor. It's about the editor of a crime beat who's also a deer. And so we're obviously going a little bit more strange with that, but we play it like a straight crime story and I do love crime fiction. And um, we actually got highlighted recently by the fact that the story does touch upon ideas of racism and acceptance within society because some people don't like this antlered storyteller. And so it was a small part of the story, but somebody had, had drawn that out of there and picked up on what we were sort of seeding. And stuff like that's really, I like when people read into my work. So I like to try and give them something to read into. Why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, your history in regards to writing, were there any inspirations that you had? Or like, did you start writing the short stories? Or was there anything that you sort of stumbled across and you thought, that's it, I'm going to be a writer? I was probably about eight years old when I declared that I'd be a writer when I grew up. I, said, I actually said I'd be a writer and a teacher, and I teach year four now and do this by nine. Um, so I was, uh, I, was, I was looking forward and had a bit of a plan. But um, as for like authors, things like that, as I mentioned, Philip K. Dick, um, Stephen King was a big influence. I like his character work. Um, but uh, within comics, you look at things like Ed Brubaker's work with Sean Phillips, Brian K. Vaughan, people that are writing good high genre concept fiction, but there's always a core to it. Um, I mean, growing up in the 80s, things like David Cronenberg's Body Horror, um, uh, the VHS classics, things like that, where they're, they're funky and they're different, but again, you can draw things out of there if you really start to think about it. All of those things are inspirations, but it's, um, it's mostly just finding where, where you want to tell an emotional story, and then you can sort of, you can draw literary influences that can then support that. So it's, it becomes a bit of a hodgepodge. So yeah, I, I write a bit of different stuff based on that. So we've got a span of genres here. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you haven't touched upon yet? Um, I have I've really steered clear of superheroes, just because I know as an independent writer, it's really hard to sort of crack that market. But it's something I would be interested in taking a superhero and still telling like a really genre story. You look at um, uh, Fraction Aha and Annie Wu doing Hawkeye as this 
very grounded crime story. I like that idea of them taking what is the fantastical and boiling it down to the character element. I'd be interested to go that way, but obviously I'd probably need one of the big two publishers to support it. Um, whereas uh, I've got some all ages stuff coming up, purely because as I said, I teach year four and the kids in my class will be like, oh, Mr. Lindsay, what do you write? nothing, don't Google me, has to be the response because they'll stumble across some really bad images that I don't want to expose them to. So I've got some all ages stuff just to see if I can sort of bend that way. Um, I, just, I, I just really like science fiction and crime and the way they can gel together. I find that works really well, but I'd love to tell a straight horror story, like a really deep horror story. Negative space comes close, but I feel like, I, like, I don't know, I, th I think it's from being a child of the 80s, that whole like video nasties thing. Sometimes they were subversive enough to be wickedly smart and I'd love to tap that vein well just once. So, uh, in saying that, do you have any plans for the future at all? Like, do you have any projects in the future? Or? Absolutely. We've got on Kickstarter at the moment, the third issue of Dear Editor is going very, very well. We've uh, smashed through our funding goal and we're chasing down some stretch goals. Um, I can't announce what it is, but I will say I have some insanely big news that should be announced soon and should uh, be sort of hopefully widely available coming into next year, but a really big piece of that career building stuff coming through. Um, and I have a pitch with Sammy Cavella, who's a Finland uh, based artist who draws Dear Editor and did my Surf Noir miniseries through Comics Tribe called Chum. Him and I have a pitch coming through about a uh, a hit woman who's assigned to actually kill a child and she finally decides that's it and takes the child and, and tries to sort of run away and it just opens up this much bigger story and um, we're really hoping to get that picked up somewhere and if not we'll probably just make it anyway to be honest. I think that's the, the, the ethos of comics sometimes it's like well we're gonna do it anyway and so it's, um, it's just one of those things where sometimes you've got a story you just have to tell. So you've written, you said here there's about four years worth of publishing here. Yeah. Okay out of the ones we've got here do you have a favourite? Oh, Dear Editor is really close to my heart, which is strange because it's not the most emotionally charged in my work, but there's something about creating a character like Bucky, who uh, we do get to give him a character arc over the three issue sort of triptych that we've formed uh, around him, but we, we write it um, digitally first, and so we, we plan it out to be tablet view, so it's uh, landscape pages, and we're just able to do our own thing. Like, there's something about that. I, I really feel like Dear Editor is that baby that I've really pushed, but um, I'm really proud. I, I like to be proud of everything that I've written because I try to hold myself to a high bar, but Dear Editor is pretty cool. Ready? We hope to see more in the future and we hope to see you next time as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for the time. I appreciate Thanks, it. Mate. Thank you. Thanks,